Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use bottom navigation with fragments using the Kotlin programming language. There are going to be three bottom navigation items, and when you click on one of those items, it's going to display a different fragment on the screen. Name the project whatever you want, but include Kotlin support. For this project, we're going to be using API 17 because that supports 96% of the devices that visit the Play Store. We're going to be using an empty activity. The first thing that we need to do is add our assets and background to the Drawables folder. I have provided a link in the description. Alternatively, you can visit material.io forward slash tools forward slash icons for the icons and on splash.com for the background. After you've downloaded the assets files, you can drag drawable folders into your project. You can use the finder or you can drag them directly into Android Studio. Start by deleting the text view in the activity underscore main.xml file. Navigate to the apps build.gradle file and add vector drawables dot use support library is equal to true. And we're going to set this in the default config and then we're going to sync the gradle files. If we didn't add this line, we would have gotten an error when we used our PNG files. Let's go back to the activity underscore main.xml file and drag an image view to the screen. If we click on the project drop down menu, we will see our background. Click OK. Let's pin this image view 0dp from the top, left, right, and bottom edges of the screen. For the scale type, choose fit xy and run the app to see how it looks on the screen. We need a new directory for our menu resource. Let's create that directory in the res folder. Inside of this folder, let's create a menu resource file. We can call it bottom underscore nav underscore menu. Switch to the text view and let's start creating our menu items. Each item will have an ID, a title, and it will reference an icon in the Drawables folder. In activity underscore main.xml, while in the designer view, search for the bottom navigation view widget and drag it to the bottom of the screen. Click OK to add the project dependency and switch to the text view and let's set the width to match parent, set the layout height to wrap content, give it an ID of bottom navigation, set the menu as the bottom nav menu which we created earlier, give the background a color, set the tint of the icons to white and the item text color to white. Delete layout editor absolute X and absolute Y. Instead, we need layout constraint bottom to bottom of parent. We also need end to start of our image view and start to start of our parent. Now let's run the app and see how it looks. It seems like we had a spelling error. Let's correct this and run the app again. Now that the interface is set up, let's go to mainactivity.kt and under the class declaration, let's create a private constant and call it M on navigation item selected listener. And let's set that to bottom navigation view dot on navigation item selected listener.
Hit Alt-Enter to add the import statement for our bottom navigation view. We want the support.design.widget.bottom navigation view. When a navigation item is clicked, the code that we have specified will be executed. So what I'm going to do at this point is set up a print statement for each navigation item. So when the home button is pressed, it will print home press to the log cat. Now in Java, we would have used switch statements, but now in Kotlin, we use when. When statements are used in place of if statements, when there are more than two conditions, we're going to identify the items by the IDs that we specified in our menu resource file. If the item is clicked, the on navigation selected listener returns true and our print line statement is executed. We will just do the same thing for the other items and if nothing is selected, we will return false. In our onCreate method, we call set navigation item selected listener on our bottom navigation and pass in the constant that we created earlier. We next need to run the app and see what happens when a navigation item is clicked. The navigation items are not highlighted when we click on, on them and since there are no fragments, it is difficult to see which item was clicked. If we check the log cat, we should be able to see that our item was clicked. Let's add our fragments. Right click on the package name and go to new fragment. And we want to select a blank fragment. Name this fragment home fragment and leave create layout XML checked and deselect include fragment factory methods and interface callbacks. Do the same thing for the map fragment and the cart fragments. For each fragment, change the text in each text view to reflect the name of the fragment. Increase the text size and change the font color to something that would be more visible, such as the accent color. We need to create a function that allows us to switch between fragments. We can place this function at the bottom of our class and call it replace fragment and it's going to take a fragment as an argument. Hit alt and enter to add the import and choose the support fragment. Let's create a constant and call it fragment transaction. We're going to set this to support fragment manager dot begin transaction. The next line of code allows us to place the fragment in the fragment container. And it seems like we have an error because we have not given the fragment container an ID in our activity underscore main.xml. We can do that now and set the constraint layout as the container for our fragment. The last thing that we need to do is commit the transaction. And that is it. Three lines of code to switch out the fragments. The final thing that we need to do is call this function whenever the navigation item is selected. So under the print statements, we're going to call the function and pass in the respective fragment. After this has been done, we can run the app and see how it works. When we click on the navigation items, we can see that the fragments are being loaded. But we still have one problem. 
the home fragment is not being loaded by default. So what we need to do is call the replace fragment function in the onCreate method. Run the app again and let's see if the home fragment is loaded when the app starts. This tutorial can be found on my website codechamp.com and if you enjoyed it, please hit like or subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Once again, thanks for watching.